What is that out there? There's something black out there. Is that a damn bear? What is that? Straight ahead. Do you guys see it? I just scared it away if it was a bear. What are these things? That's a damn... What is that, guys? I seen these all over the trail on the other, complete other side. Whoa, look, this tree's full of them. This tree's full of these. I, I really want to eat that, but I don't know what it is. Huh, is this a grape tree? Guys, it's a grape tree out here in Arkansas. I'm gonna have to take some of these. I hope I don't die. I'm not gonna eat them out here by myself. I'll eat them when people are present. Get off my hand! Oh my love! Wolf Tick Nation, thank you guys for tuning in to once again another Wolf Tick Videos real time review episode on everybody's favorite thing that we review around here. It's brakes. All well, right. I don't know about that. We have got some Titans hydraulic four piston brakes that old Titan sent us. It's supposed to be the top of the line brakes. Right about, supposed to be $105. They're top of the line. You guys can check out the uh, links in the description below. Non affiliate links, so you guys are on your own on that, okay? Uh, these brakes were sent to us with 180 millimeter rotors, and we threw them on what bike? The Ozark Trail Ridge, because these things were separated, oil filled, pre bled, ready to run internally, and then all you have to do is hook up the levers. So we got that done, guys. You missed the initial impressions episode. Make sure you guys go back and uh, make sure you guys go back and check the episode out, okay? So we're gonna take this thing. We're in Northwoods. We're not at Mount Nebo at the moment. We're gonna take this thing probably to Ragnarok, which has got a lot of flow, a lot of technical portions, and we're just going to uh, I don't know, try to get some speed going down it and see if these things will help slow us down and uh, just get us one close step or the making the trail bike ridge. You're be on. Yeah, I know. It's going to be the trail ridge. That's a very sketchy trail. This thing's still got the coil fork on there. Let's see if the uh, hydraulic brakes get us one, one more step closer to a perfect mountain bike. I don't know. You should all just right, say guys. stock fork. There's some good coil forks out and there. And a stock fork. Yeah, preload knobs, all that. Anyway, so guys, uh, without further ado, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And let's go find out if these Titans brakes can slow us down. Whoa, you forgot to tell them. We're not doing gratuitous slow-mos this oh. week because uh, we're under the gun. Yeah, we are under the gun right now. Uh, we, we've got to film like five episodes today, so no gratuitous slow-mo, okay? I know a lot of you guys are all disappointed, but y'all yeah. can still hit that like button. Let's get after these brakes. Jeez, what the hell? What is going on with the group set? That's enough to upset somebody right there. Jeez. Oh, man. Already? I mean, come on, man. What the hell's going on with this thing? It's already not shifting. Pisses me off. All right, guys. Here we go on the real-time review with the Titans brakes. What is up with this bike? We're fixing to go to uh, Ragnarok. This right here is a little back door entrance. I'm a back door man. This here entrance is a little kind of a, not a lot of people really know about it, I guess. I don't know. It'll go right to the bottom of Valkyrie and Ragnarok. And then we're gonna have to do some climbing. Then we'll get up to Hub H. And then we'll take Dreamcatcher all the way down to Ragnarok and put these brakes to the test. Uh, I'm sure we'll do some bedding in um, as we're riding. <clears throat> one of the big upsides of these brakes and i was talking about it on the initial impressions something that i liked and we'll be talking more about it is going to be the lever feel now the levers are a little far out from my fingers uh, at the moment we're going to mess with that reach adjustment that's what reach adjustments for only kind of adjustment on these brakes there's no like um bite adjustment or anything but anyway i was talking about how much i like the lever uh the quality of the levers they're kind of hidden in there They've got really nice ex an accessory gold color to them. And the quality of the lever is like not just a regular piece of stamped out aluminum or magnesium. It actually looks like they took their time and really focused on giving you a good meaty lever. So I, I do like that. It doesn't feel like it's going to break off in your fingers. Now, are these things going to be one finger or two finger today? We'll probably start out with some one finger action, kind of see how that, how that treats us, okay? 
Uh, the levers do have a nice lip on the outside where it can actually grip with the finger. So I'm looking forward to that, uh, especially whenever we move them in a little bit more, because then I think we'll actually bite down on them a little bit harder with the one finger stuff. But one finger always way better than the two finger, especially if uh, it's a four piston, really strong brake. You know, it's always nice to be able to use one finger to really bite down on the calipers. You know, this whole set, right around $105. Um, last time I looked at the website, they weren't necessarily selling them, but they had them listed um, as a Chinese company, the Titans company. Uh, so we'll be putting another link to their website or to the product, and you guys let us know if it works. Um, but pretty budget for $105. Okay, so we're gonna squeeze that front a little bit, squeeze that rear on our way down here. Try to get these guys bedded in <laughs> a little bit before we take them downhill. Um, you know, the uh, quality of the calipers. Now, I believe it was uh, Chris H. He was like, wow, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, Chris H. had mentioned, what well, river crossing, that I had mentioned, and he appreciated it, was the uh, fact that these calipers, look how nice, how beautiful that is, that these calipers are uh, one-piece design. They're not bolted into each other, it's just a one-piece, is uh, because there's a lot less parts on them. You know what I'm saying? It's just a clean design with a really big breathing port right here. So that's going to be interesting to... Um, to uh, do the real-time review, see how hot these guys get. But, all right, guys, uh, we are at the bottom of Ragnarok. This is what we'll be coming out of earlier. Okay, that was just a stump. It's not a bear. That's good. Uh, this is the bottom of Ragnarok over here. We'll be coming off of this once we get done with this little real-time review. But we got a whole bunch of climbing to do. So let's go ahead and fast-forward till we get to that point. Well, we'll see you guys all up right. there. Tonight. All right, all right. We just made it to the hub. This is Hub H here at Waterworks. Northwoods, we are right there. And we are fixing to go from here, Dreamcatcher, all the way down to Ragnarok, right where we came in over here somewhere. Um, you know what's crazy is, I mean, I'm out of breath, don't get me wrong, but dude, this bike is such a good climbing bike. Like, it really is. 29 inch wheels, uh, you know, we've got the L2 on there now. I believe that's the nine speed. This bike originally came with a nine speed and we kept that cassette on here. I think it's a Lubna 42 tooth if I'm correct. Um, and that, it's just, it's dynamite, man. It, it's just so good in the climbing. It's so comfortable, that seat lifts up all the way. I think this is the bike that the seat post does not drop all the way down in, and that's gonna be a bummer on this trail because this trail is all about shredding and getting a lot of speed. But we're not gonna be dangerous today. Um, I forgot my walkie-talkie, so we're gonna make sure we're safe with it. Um, here is, again, the hub. There's Blue Jay, there's Lucky 13, there's Valkyrie, very nasty trail, and here's Dreamcatcher. We're gonna be taking all the way to Ragnarok. Let me get a little bit of water in me, and we're gonna be doing a, a real-time review on these brakes, guys. I'm looking forward to it. Curious to see the modulation. Not too far down the trail, we're gonna mess with that uh, that little adjustment as well. All right, guys, seat post is dropped, standing room only. Let's hit this trail. Let's try these Titans brakes out. Brake test, here we go. Titans, baby. I mean, they feel pretty good right now, like I'm hitting the wall for sure, but I ain't done any stopping yet. 180 in the front, Titans brand, 160 in the rear. Let's pull these knee pads up. This is a, um, you know, I always mention on our real-time reviews, this trail is very uh, suspicious. It's like, it's a uh, dream catcher, not so much, but Ragnarok, it seems like it's not really a lot to it. Um, but the trail kind of it rides at an angle. It's very strange unless you're here and you're you're really riding it It's hard to tell on the GoPro uh, This is Dreamcatcher here But it's such at an angle and you get a lot of speed going down it and the problem is You can't overcorrect because you'll get it washed out from under you But you got to lean and steer at the same time. So it's kind of a funky trail It's a blue trail. It's a lot of fun Big brother Kevin H. I believe this is his favorite trail in Arkansas. He's from Tennessee. He's ridden all over. Um, he, he rides a lot of trails all over the place. And for him to say it, Ragnarok's one of his favorites or his favorite um, says a lot. You know, if you guys are ever here in the Hot Springs area, make sure you guys come down to Northwoods. Not only uh, do you need to ride uh, the cat's meow, but you need to give freaking Ragnarok a spin. Blue Jay while you're at it. All right, guys, here we go. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Two, one finger starting. Front brake is hitting okay. Get some more speed here, get a lot of flow. And we'll get to put these brakes to the test. A little tabletop there. Hope I don't get a flat. This trail is notorious for flats. Again, it's kind of tilting to the, kind of tilts to the left the entire time on this trail. A little sketchy. Levers are way too far out 
for me. I'm gonna have to adjust them. That front's grabbing really well. That rear, not so much. Oh, what I'm liking though is the modulation. There's not a lot of pad movement, but I can feel it making contact slowly as I grip. Oh, okay, one finger brake. I really had to squeeze the crap out of them. Um, you can tell they still need to be burnt off a little bit or bedded. What I'm liking is this is a cool design here. We're, we're going to keep on going down the trail. Do you see this mount? This is some Shimano stuff. This is what a lot of Shimano stuff does with their brakes. They put this little extra ear out here. That's for extra leverage, and you really getting to feel the lever in your fingers and not like it's going to twist off. That little piece of metal there, when we mounted it, makes such a huge difference on the feel of both of these levers. They do not feel cheap whatsoever. Now comes time. We have got to adjust this because we've got a lot more speed coming. See how far that lever is out. Now we're gonna unscrew it to the left and that sucker's gonna come way in. Oh yes. I did not wanna wait any longer. Okay, so that one is good. Oh yeah. And we'll unscrew this one to the left as well. Unscrew this one to the left. Okay, we'll go a little bit more to the right. I like that feeling right before it starts to hit my knuckle. I can finger there and then we're stopping. So if I do have to go two finger right on the cusp there of the outside of the lever makes it super comfortable. Uh, hopefully we just have to one finger these things guys, but let's go ahead and continue. It's a fast trail. Again, I hope I don't get a flat. Uh, getting a little, starting to get a little late in the day. I forgot the walkie talkie. Don't want Wolfman all worried, but a lot of technical stuff on this trail. And it's mixed throughout, but that whole first portion is so fast. Yeah, I'm liking the one fingers already. So much more comfortable on the fingers. Okay, a lot of break there, and it stopped me and slowed me down. Now we try to bread these things in a little bit when we first got here, but let's take this. Let's see. Two, both front and rear brake going there. Not bad. All front brake. Slowed me down, no problem. Super comfortable with the levers. Again, you get a lot of these brakes. Front and rear brake there, one finger. Okay, they're one finger, no problem. Hang on. Right before we got a lot of speed, what well, is messing me up? Rear camera. You know, a lot of these, um, a lot of these brakes. <laughs> this guy. Okay. A lot of these budget brakes, and I'm going to call these budget, they're $105, you start to squeeze. And the problem is you, there's no modulation. You don't feel anything until that pad makes contact or it's stopping you. And these here are the exact opposite. They feel like a really good quality four piston brake. We're going to check the temperature down here with my hand. We're actually doing very good. Let's get some more speed run here. We got some good spots to stop. I do think that they're a two finger though. They'll stop us a lot better and we're gonna have to get some spots up here, I'm sure. Okay. Damn it. Slam the brakes, they stop no problem. This damn camera keeps getting stuck in the way and messing up the ride. God, come on, man. I'm trying to enjoy myself and work here and I can't. All right, now I am. All right, so the one finger is, it, it's gonna stop you, but two fingers way better. Really all four fingers should be, all, all four piston brakes should be one fingers. And you can stop, you have big old manly hands, but you just feel a lot safer in the stopping department when it comes to a two finger in it, as opposed to the one. So that kind of sucks. They'll get you there, but you, you ought to just two finger them to really get the full potential. I'm liking the mixture of the 180 up front and the 160 in the rear. The front's grabbing big time, but I'm using that one mainly anyway. Shooting off there. Good little tabletop here. Okay. A lot of speed run. We'll try to do a stoppy at the end. Two fingers with the front brake only. Front brake only. Going for a stoppy now. Okay. And we actually stoppied that rear end a little bit. Uh, I mean, they're good. They're super cool to the touch. I can tell you that much. That rotor is putting off some heat, but the caliper is uh, cool. That's crazy, that caliper is cool. That rotor up front is like lukewarm at best. 
That is interesting. I know those big old ports right there are really going to help with the airflow. And I think it did not only help cool off the uh, rotor, at least the rear one, but it really helped cool off the uh, caliper in total. Uh, you know, I could feel that modulation even more so with adjusting the reach adjustment. That has nothing to do with uh, getting air or anything like that in the lines. Um, as far as we're concerned, we've ridden a lot of bikes with these. We've always done that. And it hasn't really made that big of a difference. Uh, we're going to go back to the truck. We're going to talk about these brakes a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I think there's some positive and negatives with these things. All right, guys, that was a real-time review on the Titans uh, four-piston hydraulic brakes. Oh, um, not a letdown. Not a letdown. I mean, they got better as it went. The thing is, I think these things really have to be. Again, it's kind of funny. We've been on the kick lately. I think these things really have to be bedded in, or they have to be sanded down on the rotors. You know what I'm saying? I think it just takes a while for those now, pads to get going. What was the difference in the rotor it came with and the, uh, the rotor it was on the bike? They were they were gripping both really good. Okay. Um, well, I say that in the beginning they were. It kind of took a minute for these maybe these pads to burn something off. Well, you it didn't really like. bed them in. No, I didn't really bed them in. I mean, a little bit in the parking lot, but. I think what it was mainly was um, just the pads because the rear was acting the same as the front. Then when we kind of started getting going a little bit longer, then they started to act a little bit better. Uh, the thing when it comes to the four pistons, I'm able to do a one finger stoppy coming down. You know, I figured that out uh, right at the end of Ragnarok. The levers are amazing. They have a couple of things um, that I wanted to mention. Um, the reach adjustment is, is great. Like I love that it's solely accessible right here. The thing about these, and I didn't mention it on the initial impressions I'm super impressed with, not only do the levers feel great in the hand, but the reason they do is because this design right here that a lot of Shimano's have. Do you see that little tab of metal? That tab of metal that sticks out makes it to where I can get so much more leverage here, and it's not just the uh, the clamp. It has that little tail hanging off there, so I can really hunker down on it and squeeze, and it feel really good in the hand. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of more of the upper echelon brake uh, levers have that, and I'm glad this one does too. It kind of just went unnoticed until I really started, you know, putting some pressure on these brakes out there. Um, impressed with the brake. I'll have to. We'll have to get this like really like legit. Maybe, maybe we'll do it with a few brakes. We have to give us a long term review because. I was able to one finger break long term. I was able to one finger break out there, but I was able to, of course, two finger break way better. And then I kind of went back and forth between the one and the two finger. Um, but I think I want to say I think that's just because um, that the brakes weren't bedded down or the pads weren't bedded in all the way. You know what I mean? Of course, the one finger will stop you, but when you two finger on these things, you can totally lock them up and go over the bars if you wanted to. But I have a feeling that these things would act way better had they been bedded in a lot more, ridden on a few times, and then go ahead and get to the process of um, doing a real time review. If that makes any sense. Well, yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't think um, you can pre qualify. Yeah, I mean, I think they, uh, I think they're very strong brakes. So when it comes to, hey, are these things worth $105? I'm not really sure yet. I would like to kind of get a different look at some more $105 area, you know, maybe plus 10, minus 10. And see how these are when they're broken On four pistons, see how these are when they're broken a little bit. I can't say these would be my first choice, but I'd like to see them broken a little bit more. I definitely think that they probably, that I would say they probably have some some competitors out there They'd in that the price running, range. They'd be in the running now. Yeah, they'd probably be in the running. Yeah, Except I mean. to see what else is out there. Yeah, uh, we should have brought the heat gauge out there because one of the big pluses, not only was the levers, but was also the calipers the one piece design with the big old breather port in there the rotors were lukewarm and so were the calipers so that was super impressive but did not bring the, the yeah forgot it temperature check got it forgot the temperature checker out there sorry sloth squatch um but uh we'll be uh we'll definitely be trying to do a um i don't know a long-term review on these brakes i think it i think uh we owe it to uh titans to be able to do that you know all right wolf dick nation appreciate you guys watching all you patrons out there thank you guys so much all the coffee supporters thank you guys so much um we will see you on the next episode. Yeah.